All right, guys, welcome to episode number three of Mentors Eight the Pacific. I'm Alvin Sanga, and I'm going to be your host for today's episode. Uh, and today we're filming a friend. Uh, we're going to be doing an interview here. We're at a Long Live Shop, and uh, what are we? Is that co-owner? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a co-owner of a Long Live uh, clothing company and uh, Opaque. So yeah, we're here at the Long Live Shop. We uh, opened about a year and a half ago. Um, yeah. Here hanging out. Okay. And this is my friend Hoser, Jonathan Jose. Um, we've known each other since high school. Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna be talking a little bit of what he does, uh, see about his products that are happening right now. Um, first thing though, um, share let's share one thing that most people might not know about you. Um, um well that's funny, uh, how you introduced me. Uh, everyone loves me as Hoser. Uh, not a lot of people know my name is actually Jonathan, and it's, it's super funny when I uh, introduce myself um, as Jonathan. Yeah, people freak out. So I mean, that's one funny thing that not too many people know about me. So where did Hoser come from? Then? Uh, Hoser, when I was uh, in elementary, there were, I think there were like three uh, Jonathans in my class. So. Um, we, uh, we gave each other nicknames and we called each other by their last names, but um, my last name is Jose and we just decided to add an R just to, I guess, make it cooler. So, kind of stuck with me since about fifth grade. Wow. That's definitely something I didn't know. Okay, so we're in your shop. Uh, you've opened this for a while, so talk to me about what's your story. How did we get um, here? So, we opened, we actually started the Long Live brand in 2010. Um, we launched on New Year's Day. Um, at the plaza, so yeah, we are gonna celebrate our ninth year pretty soon um, for the brand's existence. Uh, so yeah, I started with a few friends that I worked with um, at DNA, um, John Lisa, Jeffrey Eugen, and then the homies um, Alex Gonzalez. In 2009, you know, we started planning it. Uh, we all worked um, you know in the retail sector and kind of you know pushing other people's brands and we kind of thought you know we can we can bring something to the table we wanted something to call we wanted something we had to call to call ours you know something uh, to be proud of and to kind of you know express uh, you know um, how we felt about uh, you know the things we do so you know we, um, New Year's Day we launched um, during a New Year's party at the, at the rooftop of the plaza, it was a, you know, a huge party. Um, we partnered up with um, the local bar after five, and um, you know that was it. From there, we just kind of, kind of just launched there, and uh, we you know received, received a lot of support from family and friends, and you know it was good. Um, so yeah. 2010, that's when we launched Long Live, and then a couple of years later, I partnered up with um, my brother-in-law, Ed Mergaza, uh, and we did uh, Opaque. I wanted, we wanted to combine, um, you know, my love for skateboarding and his passion for art uh, into kind of one concept, and we kind of bridged the gap between the art and the skate community, and um, and came up with Opaque, and that was in 2012. So opaque, where, so opaque is the birth of skateboarding and art. Yes. So, yeah, so where does long live come from? Uh, long live, it's more of like um, when we present long live, it's, we present it as something like for the homies, by the homies. Um, a lot of the things we do with long live is um, um, you know friendship based, you know, and um, an expansion of our network. We uh, we like to. Um, you know, work with our friends and uh, have them, you know help them out. You know, through the brand. Um, examples being uh, featuring them as you know artists on our clothing. Um, sometimes we hold uh, private art shows for them um, in the store to kind of um, give them the exposure that they need to kind of venture out and um, you know gain new clientele. Um, so yeah, in that sense. Um, you know, along with basically strives to, you know, help the homies out, um, do the things that they love. So talk about some of the events that Long Live has been. I've been, I know you've been on the community out a lot. 
So talk about some of the events that you put on and what are the community kind of feels about it. Um, yeah, so uh, we do a bunch of events at Long Live, um, a lot of them being um, art driven as well. Um, every month or every couple months we have a feature artist here at the shop. Um, you know, they take over a section of the shop and they kind of um, make it their own space. Um, they decorate and put up their artwork. Uh, sometimes we collaborate with them and um, you know make sp uh, specific products uh, for their uh, for their um, you know for the month. Um, we do things like skate events. Um, you know, we're big with um, with uh, pushing the skateboard skateboarding community. Uh, we do. Yeah, we do uh, events at the Daily Skate Park and the Tanoo Skate Park. Uh, we also we also do a lot of uh, events with um, with like local musicians. Uh, we partner up uh, pretty often with like uh, Binary Sunset. Um, you know, they help us out. Um, we help them out. We kind of um, yeah. We basically just try to stay involved with the scene and things and things that um, you know interest us and. Things that our friends do. Uh -huh. So 2010, man, we're we're coming a long way. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. We're almost at 10 years. Um, so 10 years, or we're at eight years. Right? Just about yes. nine. Almost nine. Okay. And so talk about what were the struggles between those nine years, or what, what was one of the most difficult things you went through? Um, no, there, there was a lot, there were a lot of struggles. I mean, we started in 2010. We only, we only opened the shop about a year and a half ago. Um, you know, we did it. We did it when we were young, um, you know, not, not too much experience. Um, so you know, as the years, I think as years went by, got a little wiser. Um, we, you know, at first we kind of rushed into things. We wanted to be this big brand, um, taking influences from you know state type brands and all that. Um, and you know, it took some years to kind of you know find out who we you know who we really are, you know, what our mission is. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the beginning, um, we were one of the uh, big struggles. You know, we weren't too organized. You know, it was a bunch of young guys just doing things. Um, you know, learning things as they go. So, um, you know, we didn't we didn't spend the right way. We didn't plan things the right way. So it, it kind of took some time to you know learn that aspect of you know this business. So, and that was a big struggle. Um, another. Big struggle, maybe. Um, you know, when we first started, things weren't as easily accessible um, you know, as they are now, and that's one of the reasons why you know why we opened up. Things were uh, a little bit um, as far as like sourcing and as far as like uh, you know getting materials and all that. You know, I would say things now, things you know, in the last couple of years, have been a lot. Um, more accessible you know, to anyone that wanted to do this type of business. So, I mean, those are a couple of struggles that I think we kind of had to overcome. And um, again, we were still, every day, we, you know, as, as business owners, we face struggles still. You know, the whole um, business tax hype up and all that, and that's another um, struggle that we're going to have to face. But, you know, it's, as long as we're you know, doing what we love and kind of pushing and not losing focus, I think you know, we'll be okay. So, um, you know, we all can say that we didn't make our businesses or we didn't get to where we are by ourselves. Um, for the most part, you had your team, you had your boys put it all together. But aside from them and your support, like, who were your mentors? Who helped you like, kind of frame a mind for this business or who? I kind of mentored you or taught you. It might not even be someone you know personally, but like, who were your mentors? Um, no, first off, my my parents were, you know, they kind of got me. My parents and grandparents, you know, they were they were entrepreneurs. You know, like this this very lot that we're in right now. Um, I was raised here, and um, my um, my parents and grandparents they had dress shops and they had a restaurant, um, you know, right here, maybe like 30 feet away from here. So it's like. Um, and they kind of laid the, you know, the framework for that, um, you know, the hard work and dedication uh, that you put into, you know, running a business. Um, but then, like, you know, the details and the, the, the 
uh, more of the the specifics as what I wanted to get into. I'd say one of the people that kind of inspired me or like kind of taught me what I know of uh, would be you know the owner of DNA Kicks Hawaii, uh, Stussy um, Jude Baker. He uh, definitely learned a lot from him. Uh, what to do, you know, what not to do, um, and you know what uh, you know how to conduct yourself and all that. So he's he was a big help as to um, you know opening Long Live, uh, starting Long Live. He helped us out um, a lot, you know, bringing us into the stores, retailing retailing it for us, uh, and then also um, you know transitioning into you know opening Opaque. Mm -hmm. So definitely, they all those people play big roles to what you know what they do today. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're gonna have a little fun with the, the last question. So we're gonna think back ten years ago. So it's 2008, and you're looking at yourself. And what three pieces of advice would have you had given yourself ten years ago? So even before you opened the shop, what advice would have you given yourself, especially when you know where you're at now? Um, ten years ago, um, uh, first off, maybe you know, take it slow. Um, you know, we were so in a rush to kind of make it big and kind of, you know, you make your make your brand and kind of push it out there. And you know, the planning wasn't there. So I, it's like, one key advice, one key piece of advice I give myself is to you know, take it slow. You know. Do more research and kind of, kind of just not rush into things. Um, second piece of advice, um, I mean, it has to has to do with you know taking it slow. Uh, you know, tell myself to kind of plan things better because you know a lot of times, especially when we first started. I mean, even till today, we still kind of wing things and that's kind of like the na like the nature of like you know who we are um, so I kind of like sit back and kind of hone my planning skills um, more and third piece of advice um, hmm, I'd say um, maybe uh, maybe to not be as scared, you know, being that young, we we're kind of like unsure of ourselves. Uh, we are like I kind of like second guess myself a lot, um, and kind of held me back from you know certain things. And so uh, I'd say maybe go a little bit more with you know our gut feeling, and you know, of course, you know, if the planning's there and you know timing's right. Um, you know, that also uh, plays a factor, but maybe not holding back so much. Mm -hmm. That would be uh, the third piece of advice. Alright guys, so we're going to cut the interview there. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Please don't forget to check out Opaque and Long Live. Um, we'll post up their hours in just a little bit. And we're going to thank Hoser for stopping by. And thank see you next time. Thanks brother. Thanks guys for tuning in to Mentor Asia Pacific. Once again, I'm Alvin Sanga. Check out all our social media that's going to be linked down below. Stay tuned, more mentors are to come. Uh, we're going to be releasing a mentor every week. And please, please leave a comment down below for any mentors that you'd like to be featured on the channel. Any business professional, entrepreneur, or anybody that you believe is inspiring and can provide to be a mentor for the youth as well. Until next time, thank you very much. Sanga out.